Hi everyone, it's Rabbi Rodich here and uh, sending you all of our greetings from the clergy team at Emmanuel. Each Wednesday we are putting out some kind of a message or a meditation as one of the, the many ways that we are helping to keep our community connected and our synagogue a strong and thriving place in this difficult time. Today I am coming to you from my kitchen and I want to talk to you a little bit about a Jewish home. It can be so hard to be outside of our beautiful temple at Two Lake Street, a place that reminds us not only of all the symbols of our tradition with its beautiful architecture, but also the memories we have there of wonderful Simcha's beautiful life moments. But I think it's important to also remember that our tradition has a deep and ancient custom of Judaism happening at home. In fact, perhaps ironically, the original inventors of this synagogue, the ancient rabbis, were themselves people who determined that Judaism needed to be portable, that it couldn't only happen in one place. When the temple was destroyed, there were those who said, that's it, game over, Judaism is done. God lives on this one mountain in Jerusalem in that ancient temple, and if it is not happening just like that, we're out. But there were others, the rabbis, who had the radical idea that Judaism could happen anywhere, that God is with us wherever we are. They snuck out Yochanan ben Zakkai from Jerusalem to Yavna, and there they founded Judaism as we know it today, a tradition that is flexible and portable and can be with us in all the places of our lives. The Talmud also relates a story of Rabbis Ami and Rabbi Asi in Tiberias, where there were 13 synagogues to choose from. 13 synagogues, and these are two rabbis in the Talmud. Which one did they go to? None of them. They actually were said to pray between pillars in their Beit Midrash, in their place of study, because that was where they found holiness. And while I am not trying to suggest that we never come back to the temple, we do want to see you as soon as it's safe. I think it's very important for us all to remember that our homes are what the tradition calls a mikdash me'at, a little temple, a small place where we can have all of the customs and comfort and strength of our tradition with us. So I want to ask you to consider what are the ways that you can remind yourself that your home is not only your shelter right now, but it is also a place of Jewish living and Jewish life. I went on a little hunt around my house and found some sacred objects that are important to me, such as my grandmother's very old sidur that I uh, was so lucky to inherit. It's so old that it actually says printed in Palestine on the inside because it was printed before the state of Israel was founded. I also have my grandfather's tefillin and talit. Just a couple of things that help me feel connected to our tradition and to my family and remind me that Judaism is thriving all over the place and that each of us are people who are capable and responsible for carrying on the tradition in all the ways of our lives. So as we continue to shelter in place, to take care of one another, to take care of our community and ourselves, I want to ask you to look around your home and see what are the ways that you can remind yourself that your home is a place of Jewish life, that you don't need a rabbi to make your home a place where Judaism thrives. We can't wait to see you back in our beautiful temple where we can do that Jewish work, that Jewish life, that Jewish living together. But until then, remember that Judaism is not on pause. Judaism has always been able to continue because we are a tradition, we come from a tradition that is flexible and follows us wherever we go. Best wishes to you all and stay safe.